Right, uh, let's move on to a rather astonishing story here about a p police chief constable who is under investigation because he was wearing a model, uh, a model, a medal uh, that suggested he had been in the Falklands, a, a Falklands combat medal. But it turns out he had been 15 years old during the war. So did he really serve in that? One would assume probably not. Uh, Nick Adderley is his name. He's 57 years old. He faces allegations that he is a fantasist after repeatedly sporting the South Atlantic Medal. Seems to be probably is a fantasist. It is understood Northamptonshire's police's top cop enlisted in the Royal Navy in 1984, two years after the Argentina conflict. What is going on there? To find out more, let's uh, speak now to Mike Neville, who's former Met Police Detective Chief Inspector. Mike, I mean, it seems like a sort of funny little silly story a man's wearing a medal in a conflict that he never served in but at the end of the day this is a top cop and if he's prepared to lie about that and deceive people about that that's not really a good look is it no it's shocking really i mean I, i'm a veteran i'm exactly the same age as him so i well knew that i was in the at school when the falklands happened and what's odd about this is that nick adley's got his supporters because you know, he's come up with some good things about the police. He's been very supportive of his officers. He was, uh, he, he supported the thin blue line badge. He's also done some bizarre things. He was the police chief who was threatening to search shopping trolleys during COVID for unnecessary items. So very odd. But this whole thing stinks. Uh, and as you say, as veterans have come out in force to say this is uh, outrageous, because not only is he wearing a South Atlantic medal, but he's wearing a general service medal, which is usually awarded for people who serve, like myself and many, many thousands of others, in, in Northern Ireland. Uh, and then he's said an excuse, oh, it was my, bro they were my brother's medals. Well, every serviceman knows that you don't wear medals that belong to somebody else unless they're deceased, say your father or your grandfather, and then you wear them on the other side, the right-hand side. So the whole thing is a mess and as you say it does question the integrity of somebody when they do this what do you think his motivation is here is it just that he wants to sort of grandstand in front of um uh, a colleagues that he's carried out all of these uh, gallant services and that he's a man of honor is it that he's got a sort of weird fascination with military history collects these things and think thinks it's all right just to tool about wearing them and then what is going to happen to him I mean, what I've found with these people is that they're often like bit fantasists, really. They, they they believe what they say, and he's claiming, no, it's his brothers. But if you look at press releases, and there's articles on a, a website called the Police Oracle and other places, where it clearly says that oh, he served in the Royal Navy in the Falklands War. So if somebody's obviously said this, and who else would be saying it uh, apart from himself? So it's just very strange. I do feel sorry for veterans he is a veteran he uh who have nothing they have nothing to show for their service because they didn't certain when, when my age 50 odd years old most of the time people were in uh, germany northern ireland cyprus so there's very few medals flying around and he was in the navy for I don't know, six seven eight years and has got nothing to show for it so perhaps he thought well I, i'll take these and, and, and pretend i was in these conflicts but it's simply not good enough and and every remembrance sunday they people are caught and there's actually a facebook page called the uh, walter mitty hunters who, who are serve, ex-servicemen who find these characters who claim usually to have been in the ses or something uh, and expose them but uh, it is really a question of integrity. And worse than that, if you misrepresent, misrepresent yourself on job applications, then it could be an offence under the Fraud Act of 2006. So it depends what he's put on his applications to do uh, various jobs that he's applied for in the police. Well, he's being investigated, isn't he? I mean, <clears throat> how severe a punishment do you think this man should face? I mean, one might say that if it's any other profession, if it's there sort of inputting data into a spreadsheet, you might just be told, well, you know, you're a bit of an oddball, uh, stop lying. But when you're a top cop, and it's all about integrity and honesty, and you're in a, a very public-facing position where you have to be trusted, it suddenly becomes a lot more serious, doesn't it? Of course it does. And, and of course, if you're inputting data on a, on a spreadsheet, you don't wear a tunic which has got all sorts of fancy metal ribbons on them. And he, he's got enough of his own already. And the, we know that the, the trust in the police has just plummeted in the last few years. It's absolutely dreadful. You know, I was really proud to be a, 
a Scotland Yard detective. But now people are saying to me, you know, I just keep my mouth shut. I don't mention being in the police. So it's just really unhelpful. Uh, and he's achieved so much in his life. You know, he's got to be a chief constable and all that. Personally, I, it, it, I think it's a resigning matter. It, it would be better to go with honour rather than cling on and have all these investigations and upsetting people, make a full apology, say sorry to the veterans, make a donation to some service charity. He's already been reinstated once. He's already got one big pension to go to. Sometimes you've got to go with honour. Yeah. I think you've got a point there. It's probably best to cut and run and try and save some sort of degree of your legacy and your dignity uh, while you're at it.